Aero road bikes are the best machines for going fast, whether you're racing, trying to drop your friends, or doing your best to set a new Strava record. So if you want to blow people away with your average speeds, one of these bikes would be perfect. All of our picks are winners at the World Tour, and we've reviewed each extensively to bring you the creme de la creme. Before we get to our first bike though, remember to drop us a like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon so that you see our videos with the hottest tech before anyone else. Cervelo's S5 is the bike of choice for Jumbo Visma's Wout van Aert, Mariana Vos, and reigning Tour de France champion Jonas Vingegaard. The riders reach for this bike on fast, flat races, where speeds are high and saving every watt is of paramount importance. The current version of the S5 was launched just a few days after the men's 2022 Tour de France. Jumbo Visma used the bike in the race and netted the yellow, green and polka dot jerseys, stick stage wins and a whopping 39 days in various leaders' jerseys. Voss then followed up with two stage wins at the Tour de France Femme, the second of those being in the yellow jersey. Not bad then for a bike that wasn't even officially released. While the changes appeared fairly low-key at a glance, the new S5 is said to offer a 65 gram reduction in aerodynamic drag versus the outgoing model. While that isn't a metric we often hear used, if you crunch the numbers, that equates to around 8.45 watts at 48 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour. Some of this saving, Cervelo says, can be attributed to the updated frame tube profiles, including a deeper head tube and bottom bracket area, and a more aggressive shaping on the trailing edges of the tubes. The fork has also been updated with a new aerodynamic nose. This pokes forward of the head tube like a small ship's bow. The front derailleur mount is removable too, giving riders the option of running a cleaner and more aerodynamic one by drivetrain setup. Paris-Roubaix 2023 saw the majority of riders from both the men's and women's Jumbo Visma squads using a one by setup, so this could be something that we see adopted in road races on bikes such as the S5. But the S5 isn't all about aero, space for 34mm tyres means that you could make this a very comfortable machine indeed. Another brand that waited until after the world's biggest bike race to publicly launch its new bike was Giant. While its sponsored team bike exchange Jayco couldn't match Jumbo Visma's incredible results, their riders Dylan Gronovigan and Michael Matthews provided the perfect wins for the marketing department. Gronovigan powered his way to victory in a super fast sprint finish, while Matthews danced his way up a horrifically steep but very short climb to win stage 14. Given that Giant markets this as its do-it-all road racer, those wins were the perfect combination. The 2023 Giant Propel is claimed to be lighter, stiffer, more compliant and more aerodynamically efficient than its predecessor. On top of this, Giant says that the new overdrive aero cable routing system makes the new Propel easier to adjust while still effectively hiding any cables from the wind. As we've written a full review of the top spec bike, we can confirm that at just 6.9 kilos for the size medium large, this is one of the lightest disc brake aero road bikes on the market. Given this low weight, the Propel is competitive on the scales with some of the best climbing bikes, yet appears to sacrifice very little in terms of outright speed on the flats. On top of this, smart refinements such as an increase in tyre clearance, an overhauled cable routing system and a new two-piece aero cockpit make the Propel a bike that isn't overly specialised or difficult to live with. That's all very well and good, but this wouldn't be an aero bike video without some proper watt-saving claims. Giant says that this is 2.6% more aerodynamic and 9.2% stiffer than the previous version. Ooh, slippery. The Scott Foil is one of the original aero bikes, but with this latest design, Scott has really pushed the aero tube shapes. It's one of the new generation of road bikes that are pitched at fast all-rounders. More aero than ever, yet still lightweight and comfortable, these machines are designed to prove that there's no compromise between the three. But is it all too good to be true? As far as the Scott Foil RC Pro is concerned, the answer is a nearly unequivocal no. It ticks the aero and comfort boxes, and at 7.43 kilos for a size 56cm bike, it impresses on the scales too. 
Developed in conjunction with aerodynamics expert Simon Smart of Drag 20 the new foil is claimed to be 10% more aerodynamically efficient than the previous version. Scott says that equates to a 16 watt saving at 40 km per hour, or if you prefer, a 1 minute 18 second time saving over 40 km. Aerodynamics are a complicated business, but it seems fairly obvious at a glance where the gains have been made. While the previous foil was intended to balance aerodynamics weight and comfort by using relatively small camtail aerofoil tubes, the new foil RC frame set has much more in common with a time trial bike. The frame, fork and seat post use noticeably deeper truncated aerofoil tubes than before, while the seat tube hugs the rear wheel very tightly. In his review, Simon von Bromley praised the Foil RC Pro for providing a ride that is confident at high speed while offering plenty of stiffness, comfort and climbing ability, all while saving a whopping £5,400 over the RC Ultimate model. If it's good enough for the pros, it's good enough for us. When we first saw the latest Trek Madone at the 2022 Criterium de Dauphiné, there was one immediately notable feature that we knew would divide opinion. Trek called the hole in the frame ISOFLOW. Out went the comfort-focused ISOSPEED system, with Trek looking to improve aerodynamics while saving a little weight. Trek claims ISOFLOW allows the new Madone SLR to match the compliance of the previous ISOSPEED system on its stiffest setting. It's also said to improve the aerodynamic performance of the frame by around 3 watts and save weight. Isoflow works by accelerating the airflow through the hole as you ride. This is said to reduce the effect of the trailing low pressure zone behind the bike and rider, reducing your overall drag. In wattage terms, Trek says that the new Madone SLR and its rider are claimed to be 19 watts more aerodynamically efficient at 45 km per hour. Trek says 150 grams and 9.3 watts of aero drag are saved by the updated frame tubes and ISO flow. The remaining savings come from weight shavings at the cockpit and improvements to rider positioning as a result of the new handlebar geometry. But how does it ride? Tech editor Ash Quinlan hopped aboard a test bike to give you lucky lot the lowdown. A link to his review video will be popping up at the end of the video. Well, we wouldn't want you clicking off just yet. Our final bike is currently unreleased, but it has started 2023 with a bang. Mathieu van der Poel rode his updated Canyon Aero to solo wins at Milan San Remo and Paris Roubaix, two incredibly different and difficult races to win. Along with the Scott Foil, this was a bike that made Aero popular, both in the pro peloton and amongst us recreational riders. Fast forward to when the 2022 model was released and Canyon boldly claimed that it was the fastest race bike on the market. Developed in conjunction with the experts at Swissside, the Aeroad was claimed to be an average of 5.4 watts more aerodynamically efficient than the old 2019 model at 45 km per hour. There was, however, a bumpy road ahead for the Aeroad. Dirt ingress and engineered in movement of the seat post caused premature wear in a small number of bikes. A stop ride notice was then issued to customers after Vanderpol snapped his handlebar in a race. Those issues have since been solved, but that seemingly hasn't stopped Canyon's engineers from tweaking the design. The new bike, which we'd expect to see at some point in 2023, sees one or two changes to the seat post clamp arrangement. The principal change appears to be a repositioned seat clamp and Canyon, as you'd expect at this stage, is remaining rather tight-lipped as to whether any other updates have been made beneath the metaphorical bonnet. Further to that, Vanderpol's setup from Paris-Roubaix offers a hint as to what else might have changed. The Dutchman started the race on 28mm tubeless Vittoria Corsa Pro tyres, but took a quiet moment, by Paris-Roubaix standards, to make a quick bike change. Photos from the famous velodrome suggest that Vanderpol finished the race on 32mm tyres. Given that the current model has space for only 30mm tyres, it's entirely possible that Canyon has increased tyre clearance in this updated model. It's very hard to separate these bikes, but any of them would do the job of making you quite a bit faster. But which one would you have if money was no object? Let me know in the comments and if you like your aero bikes, then why not check out Ash's review of the Madone? Before you do that, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time.